Hey everybody, Chad here. Another, listen, another real law attraction story is coming up, baby. And this time, this time it's myself, you know, and you're going to want to really listen to this. If this is the only video you listen to and the real law of attraction stories, you want to listen to this one because I'm going to talk about Thailand. Well, I lived in Thailand for one year. Okay. And in Thailand, I was doing Neville Goddard's Law of Assumption techniques. All of techniques that Neville Goddard teaches in his lectures and his books, I was actually doing in Thailand and I was really doing them. Okay. I was doing them so anal and we'll talk about that. I was super anal with them, but surprisingly, I got really, really powerful stories around it. I got really weird things happen to me around it that it really made me a believer. Now, I've been doing law of attraction or believed in law of attraction, you know, live, being positive my whole life, you know, 20 years, you know, or so. And, you know, and it wasn't until maybe just a couple years ago that I was really a true believer because I had such powerful circumstances happen to me in Thailand. Such weird experiences happen to me in Thailand that really made me think like, dude, this stuff really works. If we really do them, you know, that's, that's, that's the question. Most of the time we're not getting results because we're not honest with ourselves. Okay. We know what we need to be doing, but we're not doing it. Okay. You're not doing it. So you're not getting the result that you want. Okay. Then you flip it to, well, this stuff don't work. No, it works. What's not working is yourself. Okay. You're not doing it. And we're going to talk about law. We're going to talk about law of attraction, law of assumption and Thailand in this true story. Of myself, of course. Okay, let's get rocking and rolling. Now, now, the reason I thought about this, I didn't think about doing a video on this, it, but I, but my YouTube channel is growing. I always comment back to comment. Some people ask me questions, and I had a very unique question by by what, what I don't know if he's a, a subscriber or not, but somebody who commented commented, and he had you know some. So I'm like weird things happen to him around law of attraction, law of assumption. And he kind of flipped the question to me. Have, you know, have you had any weird experiences? And right away, you know, right away, my mind went to Thailand and I answered him and I actually wrote a long comment. I forget like what video it was on, but I actually wrote a, a long comment and was, you know, explaining some of my experiences in Thailand. And as I was writing them, I even said in the comment, I was like, dude, I need to make a video on this <laughs> because, because I had some like very unique stuff happen that it's very interesting. I think pe and people would like to hear. Okay. Now, now, one of the things to kind of set the premise of Thailand. Okay. When I went to Thailand, I, I went to Thailand for one year. Okay. And I wasn't planning on one year. I, I started off with a three month tourist visa. So I was going to stay three months. And since I was there, uh, you know, I extended my visa several times. So I stayed almost a year. I think I stayed about 10 months, but pretty much almost a year. So one thing is when I went to Thailand, I went by myself. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> okay. So I didn't go with friends. I didn't know anybody there. So I didn't have a temptation that, you know, other people will take my time. So when I went, it was really just I can do whatever I want. Okay. I didn't go with a girlfriend. I didn't go with friends. I didn't go with significant other. I didn't go with a spouse. So forth and so forth. So forth. So I was truly by myself in my resort in my room. Okay. So I had my own routine. I was doing everything that Chad wanted to do. Okay. And, you know, we're kind of discuss that a little bit later, why I did that, why I went by myself and stuff like that. But I don't want to get off on a tangent. Uh, because I want to stay focused on law of attraction because this is kind of a long story. Okay. But I just want to set the premise. Okay. I went by myself. Okay. And that's really a big thing here. Okay. Because when you go by yourself, you don't have nobody else pulling you wanting to do stuff. You kind of dropping what you want to do and you go and do, I mean, do, do what they want to do. They mess up your morning routine and bedtime routine. You end up just catering to what they do at nighttime, maybe they're listening to TV at night, listening to music at night. Maybe the TV is going all night long. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Like I'm doing exactly 100% what Chad wants to do because I'm by myself. Okay. Then okay, on top of that, I never watch TV there. Seriously, because 
I'm in Thailand. Most of the stations, 98% of the stations are in Thai. So I think I turned the TV on one time and you know, I went through the channels. Everything's in Thai. I think they had one or two channels that had English movies they played all the time, but I wasn't really interested. So for the first, probably for the first, I would say five months straight in Thailand, I never watched TV. Never. <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? So now there's two major things, okay? I went for myself. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I'm in control 100% of my routine. And I'm not watching TV. I'm not tempted to even watch TV because everything's in Thai, okay? So, you know, at the time, I didn't really speak Thai and I didn't understand Thai. So I didn't have the TV on. So, I mean, those two things are the biggest things here. Okay, because I'm in control of everything and I'm not tempted to to, you know, when I get sleepy, I'm listening to TV, I fall asleep to a movie, fall asleep with a TV on and everything like that, because that's really that's why I bring up the TV thing, because that's really what we do as a bad habit today in our society. And I'm just as guilty of it when I talk about this. Okay, and I fall in this trap, too. That you know, when we get drowsy, even if we get drowsy during the day, we want to take a nap. Maybe it's on a weekend, we want to take a nap. Maybe at nighttime we get drowsy and we take a nap or we fall asleep with the TV on, we fall asleep watching a movie. I mean, that's really very, very de detrimental to our subconscious mind. Because when we go to sleep, our conscious mind goes to sleep, our, our subconscious mind is awake. So whatever we're listening to, you think you're not listening to it, but your subconscious mind can hear it. Okay, so if you're watching a movie, scary movie, people killing each other, an action movie or whatnot, your subconscious mind is hearing that. You fall asleep, fall asleep to a soap opera, people, all, and there's always issues and problems going on. Well, that's going inside your subconscious mind. So that's why I bring up the TV thing, because I, ha I had no temptation to turn that flipping thing on. Okay, now I did from time to time, you know, I would listen to stuff on on my phone and maybe watch something on my phone, okay? But the TV was always off. Okay, now those two are the two things. Now, let's get to Neville Goddard. Okay, while I was there, you know, I started getting in, getting more into Neville Goddard. Now, I've always heard of him, but this is the kind of the first time I really got super anal with him. So I really got super anal with, with, with what I was doing with Law of Attraction, setting an intention, and it was a perfect time for me to kind of really do these exercises, to, to kind of test them out, to see if they really work. Okay. So that's what I kind of started doing. So my, my routine, okay, I first set an intention. I set a want and I knew exactly what I wanted. Okay. And this is kind of the first step. When you set an intention, you have to know exactly what you want. And I know this sounds like an oxymoron. Okay, I know this sounds dumb that people don't know what they want, but sometimes people don't know what they want. Sometimes people are confused what they want. Sometimes people constantly change their mind of, about what they want. It makes sense. You're constantly changing your mind. You don't know what you want. It causes confusion. Okay, when you're confused, you know, you're, you, the universe don't know what to bring to you. Okay, because if you don't know what you want, the universe don't know. Okay, simple as that. And I bring that up too because I can go through these stages as well. You know, I can go through these stages where, where I say I want something, but I really don't. I don't want it, or I, or I start changing my mind too quick. But I want this. No, I want this. No, I don't want that. I want to do it. You know what I mean? It just causes confusion. But when I was in Thailand, I had this one intention that I really set, and I told myself, you know what? I'm gonna get really serious about this. I had this one intention, and what I would do is every time I'd wake up, and you know, I lived in a resort, so. They had a buffet breakfast for free, and that came with the room, okay? So I didn't have to pay for it. Just, you know, when you pay for the room, it automatically came with it. So every morning when I get up, I would get up, take a shower, go up and eat breakfast, and I would eat breakfast by myself. What I started doing was I started listening to Neville Goddard, okay? I started listening to a lot of his top recordings on, on there's several of them, like How to Live in the End, The Secret of Imagination. I have them on my channel. Now, I put together, I actually put together, and I'll link it here. I actually put together the top ones I listen to, and I put it all into a bundle where you can just listen to it straight, okay? And Neville Goddard, in these lectures, he really goes into the details 
of how to manifest, like what he did. Okay. And I would just listen to him over and over and over. And another one I listened to, I started listening to the pruning shears of, of revision. Now this isn't a lecture. This is like an audio book, but I would listen. I would, I would listen to that one like every single day. And I will, I would listen to you know, secret imagination. I would listen to how to live in the end, how to manifest some of his, you know, his recordings that were really walking you through what to do. Okay. That's one thing I would do. And I was super anal with it. You know, sometimes when I get up in the morning, I would listen to it. Okay. And a lot of his lectures are about 45 minutes. Sometimes I'll listen to it twice. Okay. Almost an hour and a half throughout the day. If I went on a walk, because I did walk a lot in Thailand before I bought a motorbike, I walked all over. So when I, when I would walk down to Bangalore road or walk somewhere, I would have my earpiece in listening to Neville Goddard. If I went walking on the beach, I would be listening to Neville Goddard. I wasn't listening to regular music. I was listening to Neville Goddard. So probably I, I'm being hundred percent honest with you here. I was probably listening to him probably three hours out of the day. Okay. Now I wasn't just sitting down, taking three hours and listening. Okay. I was doing something at the same time of listening. That's how I could, that's how I could listen to him for three hours. I would go up and eat breakfast, be listening to him. If someone came over, started talking to him, I would stop. You know, if I, if I would go walking and it would be like a 20 minute walk, I would be listening to him. If I felt like going down to the beach or walking on the beach or running on the beach, I was listening to him. You see what I'm saying? I'm kind of multitasking a little bit. But honestly, I was listening to him three hours a day. Okay. I was doing that like every single day. Okay. To keep it fresh in my mind, just listening to it over and over and over because I set this one intention. Okay. And since I was by myself, okay. Sometimes when you're by yourself, sometimes it can cause anxiety. You know what I mean? Because you're not working. You're not, you're not doing things that take your time. You have to really figure out what you like to do stuff like that. So sometimes you can have internal anxiety going on because you want this intention to come true. So forth and so forth. So another thing I started doing was when I would feel, you know, when I would feel a little bit anxious, I would feel a little bit worried. You know, I set, I, I made up an affirmation, but I made up an affirmation around my attention. So now I would do this every day and several times a day. Like when I would feel, and I would feel anxious, or I would feel worried. You know, I would just repeat out loud. I would be inside my room by myself, of course. <laughs> People think I'm crazy, you know, uh, but I would be in my room and I would be like, thank you, Father. And every time I made an affirmation, I always say thank you. I always switch it around to being grateful, gratitude. And I would be, thank you, Father. And I would repeat my, I would, I would repeat my intention, you know, like it's, you know, like it already came true. Then sometimes I would go on. I would say, thank you, Father, that abundance is inside me. Thank you, Father, that blessings are around me. Thank you, Father, I'm in Thailand. Thank you, Father, I'm living by the beach. Thank you, Father, I'm in this magnif magnificent resort. You know, and it would put me in a different state. Even when you start talking like that, it kind of lifts your spirits a little bit. So anytime I felt worried or anxious a little bit or kind of worried that is this intention going to come true? I would, I would have affirmations, I would say, and I would do this every day. And this I would do sometimes several times a day because that's, it's so easy to state an affirmation. Okay. Now, when I first started, I was doing that. Then I created a morning and bed, bedtime routine. Okay. If you follow, if you follow Neville Goddard and you listen to Neville Goddard, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. The best time to kind of go inside your imagination is to do it in the morning and at night. Okay, right before you go to bed, when you start getting drowsy, you start feeling like you go go to sleep, that's when you go inside your imagination. You live in the end. You imagine your intention that you set is true. Okay, you can see yourself doing it. You can feel yourself doing it. Makes sense? Never God talks a lot about feeling. Okay, not just seeing yourself doing it, but you actually doing it in your imagination. Like if I'm if I want to see myself drink this water, okay, what he means by feeling, you know, feeling myself do it is me actually doing it. Me actually picking it up and feeling the weight of the cup, me actually feeling the kind of it's a little bit cold because it's it's you know it's metal. Okay, and plus I just pour cold water in there. It's a little bit cold, it's a little bit slippery, feeling it. Then when you take a sip, you feel the water. Plus it's lemon water, so it's a little bit sour. Okay, so when I take a sip, I can taste the sourness and bitterness of the lemon. 
Okay, that's really what you should be doing in your imagination. Okay, another way to explain this, let's say you're running on the beach. Okay, we've all went to the beach probably sometime in our life. Okay, I mean, how does it feel when you walk across the hot sand? You know what I'm saying? Okay, you're kind of, you're running across it, you're burning your feet, you know, you're running, you're just running to either get in the water or get in wet sand. Once you get in wet sand, you're like, oh, makes sense. You feel the wet sand go around your feet, go in between your toes. Okay. Okay, you can, you can feel the wind, the crisp wind, the wind blowing against your face. Lots, some, lots of times you can taste the salt water. You know, if you've been at the ocean that when it's windy, sometimes you can taste the salt water. You're not even in the water, but sometimes in the wind, there's salt. So you can taste the salt water in your mouth. Okay. When it's windy, you can see, feel the little splash of the ocean. You can smell the ocean. Okay. The ocean has a certain smell to it. Make sense? So that's going inside your imagination. That's why I'm giving you this example is you're not just seeing yourself doing it, you're feeling yourself doing it. You're actually doing it inside your imagination. So this is what I would do. And I could, because since I was by myself, of course, okay, I wasn't with a girlfriend. I wasn't with nobody was staying with me that would disrupt my morning and my morning and nighttime routine. Okay. Every time I got super tired, drowsy, I would do that at night. And, we, and then in my room, they had like, like dark curtains, Okay, that's what I would like. I would call them that keeps the sunlight out. So once you close them, it's like pitch black in the room. I mean, it's like it's like, you know in the beginning, it's kind of weird laying there on the bed by yourself in pitch black. You know, in the beginning, it's weird, but you get used to it. But you know, that's what I did. You know, when I shut the curtains, when I got tired, drowsy, I would go right into my imagination and actually fall asleep in that state. See, in Neville Goddard's recordings, that's what he says to do is you get super drowsy, super sleepy, you go inside your imagination, and you're in your imagination, and you drift off to sleep. Okay? And this is what I started experiencing when I started doing that. I started noticing, because I got better and better and better with it, I started noticing that I, as I would, as I, you know, we all kind of wake up throughout the night, we all kind of wake up and turn over. We're not fully awake, but we all kind of wake up, we, not every night we're just sleeping like we're dead, okay? You know what I mean? We all kind of wake up here and there. Maybe we wake up, take a sip of water. Maybe we just wake up and turn over, okay? And what I started noticing was when I would actually drift off in my imagination, I drift off to sleep, every time I would wake up and just roll over or whatever, my mind went right back into my intention, into my imagination, like what I fell asleep thinking about, Okay? Uh, and that was really weird. That's when I started thinking, oh, th th this stuff kind of works a little bit. Okay. Then, then he said, you know, then he would have a morning routine where he, you know, he would get up. You're still in that drowsy state. You're not going to go back to sleep. But right when you wake up, it was so easy for me to think about my intention to go inside my imagination. Because when I fell asleep in that state, when I would wake up, that would be the first thing I was thinking about. Okay, that was kind of really weird to me because most of the time we say, oh, yeah, we do the nighttime routine. You know, I think about it, but you don't do it proper. Okay, you know, you're still on your phone looking. You know what I mean? You're still like tired and looking or you're tired watching TV. Then you turn off the TV, maybe and you think and you say your little affirmation really quick and you go to sleep. You're not going inside your imagination. You're not seeing yourself doing it because once you start doing it proper, you're going to start waking up throughout the night and you're thinking without even forcing yourself, forcing yourself to think it, you're thinking exactly your intention. You go right back in, inside your imagination. Then when you wake up, the first thing you think about is your intention. You don't forget about it. Okay. When you're doing this right, you don't forget about it first thing in the morning, but that's what you, that's what you fell asleep thinking about. That's what you fell asleep doing. So the morning and bedtime routine becomes very easy, okay? So I was doing that morning and night, morning and night, like clockwork. So so get so get what I'm doing. I'm doing that morning and night. On top of that, you know, I'm going to breakfast and throughout the day, I'm listening to Neville Goddard probably about three hours out of the day, three hours out of the day. 
then when I would feel like anxious or worried about my intention, I would have affirmations I would say out loud. You know, I am affirmations, thank you aff affirmations, and it would be around my intention. Now I say those out loud. Okay, I was doing all this. On top of that, I'm not done yet. This is why I said uh, this was like really, really, I was really anal with this, um, with this stuff. On top of that, I added in two more things. I added in, I would do a five or 10 minute meditation kind of throughout the day. And I would, I added in a writing exercise. Now the writing exercise, I didn't do every single day, but what I would do is I would do spurts of it. So I would write for five days straight and I would, I would take a, I bought like a notebook, went down to the 7-Eleven and bought a notebook. So I bought a notebook and I wrote out my intention. I wrote it out like, thank you, or I am, you know, that it's already occurred. Okay. That's how I write. It already happened. Okay. So, and I would write it on the whole front page and the back page. And I would do that five days in a row. And, and I did, I did this thing probably two or three times. So I did it five days in a row and I stopped. But this exercise takes about 20 minutes to do. If you do it right, if you really take a notebook and you just write on every line what you want and you flip it over and do the same thing, it takes about 20 minutes to do, 15 to 20 minutes. I did that. Okay, I did that about two or two or three times while I was in Thailand. Um, the writing exercise, and what was the other thing I said? I said the meditation. Now, the meditation I did every day. Sometimes I would do a long meditation, depending upon my mood. Sometimes I would sit there for 20 or 30 minutes. Most of the time, it was just five or 10 minutes. And this is how I use meditations. I use meditations. That's Bo, that's Bo barking outside. Um, this is how I use the meditations. The meditations, I used it as when I started feeling kind of, you know, again, kind of worried or anxious, I, I would sit down and do a quick meditation. And I, that's what I mean by quick. A meditation doesn't have to be, well, I don't have 20 minutes or 30 minutes to meditate. Lots of times I would just sit down and just quiet my mind for like five minutes. And I would use the meditations thinking about my intention. So lots of times I would just quiet my mind. Then I would go inside my imagination and, and think about my intention, what, what I wanted inside my imagination. Even though I'm not going to go to sleep, but I'm doing the same exercise in, inside the meditation. So I'm doing all this stuff, okay? But what I did was I scattered it throughout the day. I didn't do it all at one time. I didn't do it all in the morning. So I didn't have to think about it all, think about it ever again. I did it. I scattered it throughout the day. Okay. So, and I think maybe that's why it worked super good because, and I'll give you an example. What I did really fast is, is, um, Get Bo like stop from barking out there. He sees the sees the neighbor's dog out there barking a lot. But I'll give you a really quick example of what I mean by I scattered out today. I scattered it throughout the day because what people like to do is people like to say I'm doing all these exercises, but they're really not. Okay, they're cutting corners. They're really not doing it. Maybe they do it one or two days and they don't do it again. But they tell you they do, and then and they say, well, this doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because you're not doing it. Okay, or if you give them a writing, a writing assignment to do for five days straight, they'll come back and comment back or email you back and say, well, do I really have to write it? Can I just write it one time and just then just repeat it out loud? Like they don't want to do the actual exercises and they wonder why this stuff don't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, I'm back. I take a, I had to let Bo in because he kept on barking there. Um, but anyway... Let me give you a short example of what I mean about you have to scatter this stuff. What we what we do is human nature. We want to take shortcuts. OK, there's a lot of things we want to do. We want to jam pack it in the beginning of our day to try to get it done in one hour. And we don't have to think about it throughout the whole day. OK, I didn't do that. OK, I scattered it because I was really I really wanted my intentions to come true. I really wanted to do these techniques as anal as I can um, to see if it really works. 
Okay, so when I would wake up in the morning, I would go, immediately I would go right into my attention, go right into my imagination for a few minutes. Then I would get up, take a shower, go to breakfast. When I went to breakfast, I would listen to Neville Goddard. Then I would come back down to my room. Okay, so when I come back down to my room, sometimes I would you know, go do something, go on a walk. When I would go on a walk, I would listen to Neville Goddard. Then when I would come back, you know, maybe I'm, I'm kind of feeling... Now, I'm thinking about my attention, but sometimes you, when you think about it, sometimes you don't know if it's going to work or not, so you feel anxious or worried. Then I would, I would repeat my, I would repeat my, um, <clears throat> my affirmations I, I made around my attention. Okay. Then maybe a couple hours later, I have my writing exercise. I would sit down and do my writing exercise. Then a couple hours later, I would, I would sit and do a five or 10 minute meditation. Okay. Then, then at nighttime, I would when I was getting sleepy, I would go, I would go lay down, close the curtain, shut the curtain, shut everything off, lay down, and I would go right into my imagination and actually just lay there and think about it until I went to sleep. So now I was actually, and this is probably the most powerful part when I when I was doing the, doing these exercises because again, I wasn't watching TV. Okay, I wasn't falling asleep to the TV, falling asleep to music playing or anything like that. I mean, I was actually just laying there and thinking about my attention, going inside my imagination. And so even if I struggled falling asleep, when I eventually went to sleep, I went to sleep thinking about my intention, thinking about what I wanted in my imagination. Now, some, some of the weird things I've had happen, and this was, a, you know, I'm sorry, this was a long explanation, but I just want to set the premise of, of I was so anal about what I was doing. But, but some of the weird things that was happening around this, I mean, for one, when I set my intention, my intention came true. Okay, what I wanted came true. It came true within probably about 30 days. Okay, super quick. Okay. Then, after it came true, okay, I set a second intention. And my second intention was even stronger. My first intention was just one thing. Okay. Now my second intention, I kind of lived on the edge a little bit. My second intention was bundled with maybe about four or five things. Okay. And I was kind of, I was kind of skeptical, skeptical, <laughs> if I could talk, I was kind of skeptical about setting the second intention because lots of times we hear only set one intention, only set something simple, one thing that causes no confusion. But this time, I kind of stretched it. You know, I bundled about four or five things inside this one intention. Okay, so four or five things had to happen for everything to come true. Okay, and I did the exact same thing. I set the second intention. I had the same type of routine. And within probably, a, with the second intention, within probably, probably a month and a half, the second intention came true. Like all the things, all four or five of them came true. <laughs> okay. So I had two intentions that some big ones, you know, they were kind of big intentions. And the second one was way bigger than the first one because the first one was only one thing. Okay. But the second one included four to five things. Okay. So I put like four to five things in there that kind of wrapped into one thing. But these four or five things had to occur to get this one thing. The second intention happened. Okay. And another, and and it wasn't like super weird, but it just made me feel like, well, this stuff really works. Like this stuff, you know, this stuff really, you know, if we, you're really doing the exercises, really doing, doing, doing the right way, dude, this stuff really works and it can actually work fairly quick. Okay. In a short period of time, a month, month and a half. Like in, in this example, first one was a month, the second one was a month and a half. Okay. Another weird thing I kind of had was, was one night I went to bed and I was um, thinking about one of my friends. And when I laid back, I was so used to kind of doing, like g going to sleep, thinking about what I was thinking about my attention, thinking about my wants. And really, I was kind of really in the mode of doing that. I'm not going back like this. <laughs> like I'm going to fall off the chair and go to sleep. 
But I was at this point, I was so much in a, in a routine of doing it. I was kind of getting good at doing it that this one, I had a really weird experience because I was thinking about my friend and, and when I was thinking about them, I kind of fell asleep in that state and I was thinking about them for like two, three nights and I fell asleep in that state. And one night, this is like super weird and it's hard to even explain one night. It was right in the middle of the night. It happened like two, three in the morning. And I just like almost like woke up, almost like woke up. Like I have like sleep, like sleep apnea, like something just like startles you, startles you and you just woke up super fast. Like I had to like catch my breath and it was really weird because when I woke up like that, how I like catch my breath, but my mind went right to my friend and I immediately got worried for my friend. And, um, so then I started saying affirmations about my friend. So then I actually sent them a text to make sure everything was okay. But the weird thing was they never answered. Okay. And of course I sent them a text. I sent it at two, at, you know, like at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, at least Thailand time. Uh, and so I figured they might not answer right away. So that I ended up going back to sleep when I woke up in the morning and you know, I checked my phone, they never answered the text. <laughs> you know what I mean? The next day they never answered the text. So I'm thinking, dude, that's kind of weird. It's weird that I woke up in that state and it was such a weird feeling. You know, it was just, you know, I wasn't even, I mean, I was kind of thinking about them, but I wasn't, I wasn't worried about them or anything. Like before this incident happened, I wasn't worried. I was just thinking about them and just something just startled me like right in the middle of the night. And I just like really just woke me up to catch my breath and my mind immediately went to them. It's such a weird feeling. It was really weird. And and when I reached out to them in text, they didn't, you know, they didn't reply to me. Okay. And um, they didn't reply to me for like three, four days. And finally, what I found out, you know, after maybe a week or two, finally what I found out when I was talking to them is they ended up, I mean, something not really bad happened to them. You know, they didn't work, weren't in an accident or anything, but they ended up getting arrested that night. So... So when we were talking, when I was talking to them and they, and I was making sure, you know, everything was okay. And then they started kind of telling me what happened, whatever. Then it, it started to dawn on me. It's like, because I started kind of connecting the two stories. I, I was like, you know, listening to him and, and because I was saying I was worried about you. And I told him like my, you know, kind of what happened to me. And that's why I kind of sent you the text because I just woke up so startled. And I immediately started thinking about you, like something happened to you. So when we started talking, we started comparing, com basically comparing stories because he was interested. Like, well, 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 what time did you, you know, wake up? Because when I got arrested, I got arrested in the middle of the night. And I woke up in the middle of the night. You see what I'm saying? So I said, you know, well, I woke up. I mean, I don't know exactly what time it was. It was like 2, 2, 33 in the morning. So he said, like, that's when he got arrested and was at the police station. So it was like really, a really weird coincidence that I would like wake up startled like that, thinking that something bad was happening to him. And, you know, then it really was. Once we compared the stories, it was a really weird experience. But it was all around because I was so into the Neville Goddard and hopefully the lighting is really good. The, the sun is shifting here. Uh, so, but so, I, but I was so into the Neville Goddard techniques of law of assumption. I was really doing them super anal and it, and I don't know because I just, I don't know if it's subconsciously, I was just thinking about them or whatnot. And then, and then I had that experience. Um, and that's probably the kind of the most, like kind of the weird, the weirdest experience I had in Thailand. Uh, and I don't know, you know, I don't know uh, if you've had experience like that or not. You can comment below and kind of let me know. But when, when I kind of went through all this, you know, that's what kind of really kind of taught me a little bit that, you know, this stuff really works. Okay. You know, if we really do the exercises. You know, if we really do them, and I, and I think that the greatest, the greatest thing that don't work for us is because we're not on any type of routine. Makes sense. Even when I come back here and I'm visiting my mom, my family, my sister, brother-in-law, nephew, and stuff like that, you know, I'm not even. I mean, I'm not doing the the techniques and the law of assumptions and never got our stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing it as strict as I was in Thailand versus here. You know, you know what I mean. So. 
and you, you, you might be living with other people where they always have the TV on and you can't just turn the TV off and just listening, nothing. You know what I mean? I think that's why it has such powerful, powerful um, things happen because where it kind of made me believe that, you no, know, this stuff really works. You know, if you really just, you know, go to bed at nighttime, turn off that TV, don't listen to anything, don't listen to anything an hour before the bed, before you go to bed, you know, get in that drowsy state and go inside your imagination and fall asleep in that state. Okay. And in the beginning, you might have to work for it. You might, it might be awkward, but you get used to it and you get better at it. And, um, and I think that's, that's the biggest thing I think what worked for me because I was by myself. I wasn't living with anybody else. You know, it was my routine. And, um, oh, another thing, one more, more, one more thing when I, when I close, another thing that really happened, I was going to share with you, I, I was forgetting, is that lots of time I was doing this also, and I did this several times where, and I would do it at nighttime, where you have, you've ever, like, like, this was kind of around my attention, okay? You, you've, you've ever kind of asked the universe, kind of like, oh, give me a sign. Give me a sign that not to give up. Give me a sign to hang in there. You know, give me a sign this is true. I mean, have you ever done that before? Maybe at some at some point in your life, uh, maybe you'll, you know, you're trying to listen to your intuition. And what I would do was, and I, I started thinking about these questions. I thought, you know what, I'm going to test this out. And, but I connected it to Neville Goddard, okay? I connected it to uh, his sleep routine or go inside, go inside the imagination. So I would do my, my, I would do my attention, go inside my imagination before I would go to bed, before I would feel like I was going to go to sleep. You know, I would ask, you know, whoever I would ask God or ask the universe and I would repeat it, you know, you know, give me a sign or give me a specific sign that this is true. Give me a, a specific sign to hang in there. Okay. And I would just go to sleep in that state. Okay. And I've done this several times in Thailand, and it it kind of came back with weird experiences again. Because what I found was when I when I did that at nighttime, and I slept in that state, when I would wake up, I would tend to forget about that question, and I would just move on with my day. But then sometimes, sometimes in the middle of that day, or maybe the next day, and it was always around when I truly forgot about it. I truly wasn't controlling the how that. I would, out of the blue, I would like get a sign, okay, or get an intuitive thought that would be around that question that I asked, okay. Um, I did that several times. I was getting kind of really weird experience with that because I started, and that's when I started doing a lot of videos about law of attraction in Thailand. Uh, if you go back to kind of the beginning of my channel, not the very beginning, but there's a sling, maybe like 30 videos that I'm in Thailand. Um, you can tell I'm in Thailand because I'm darker <laughs> because I'm outside a lot and I always have tank tops on. Uh, that's what well, the cue. You can see, you see I'm in kind of in a resort room, like a hotel room, but, uh, but every video I have a tank top on because it's hot in Thailand, of course. Um, uh, but, but, um, I started doing a lot of videos on law of attraction, law of assumption, intuition, listening to your own voice, um, and getting kind of deeper. And that's another thing I was doing, getting deeper in my own intuition. You know, stop really asking people for advice, being anal with asking people for advice. The answer is always within us. Okay. Lots of times we, when we go to other people for advice, I'm not saying we can never ask someone for advice. I'm not saying we can never ask somebody for what they think. Okay. But most of the time, what we do is, and I do, I do it too, okay, is we don't just ask one person. <laughs> we start asking multiple people. The more people we ask, they have a different opinion. The more people I ask, it causes confusion in the mind. Okay, we don't know what, what to think, where to go, who to believe. You know what I mean? And it kind of dulls down our own inner voice. It kind of dulls down our own intuition, okay? And, um, and when I was, I was, I was training, doing videos on intuition at the same time, I was listening to Never God or listening to things on intuition and listening to recordings and trainings on intuition. And, um, then I started doing meditations around intuition. Like if I was you know, seeking a certain question, I started doing trainings and just really stopping asking people for advice 
And that, well, that kind of was, you know, helpful being in Thailand because I didn't know anybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, my close friends weren't there and stuff like that. And, you know, I really started really getting like kind of really felt like more in tune to myself. Okay. More, more kind of, you know, the answers would just come to me. Like if I had a question, you know, I would just ask it and, you know, and, and just completely let go of it. You know, that's when, that's kind of how I learned. That's how I learned a lot of the power of letting go and stop controlling the how. Okay. It's, it's lots of time. It's only when we let go and stop controlling the how, when things kind of come to us pretty quick. Okay. And I, and I, and I saw that and I felt that in my own life in Thailand, especially around intuition, especially around if you had certain questions, you know, you know, certain guidance questions, you know, what should I, what should I do? It could be career questions. It could be relationship questions. It could be, it could be money questions. It could be any question, but you're asking the universe, you're asking God. And once you ask, okay, you need to kind of let go, stop controlling the how and kind of forget about it. Okay. Because every time I got that intuitive voice, every time I, something would kind of, kind of, be spontaneous and would answer that question. It was always when I totally forgot about it. Always. Okay. If I, if I asked a question at nighttime and I fell asleep, when I got up during the day, if I got up totally forgetting about, I asked a question the night before and I just went on with my day. Like sometimes in the middle of the day, I would, the, the answer would come to me just all of a sudden. I wouldn't even be thinking about it and the answer would come to me. Um, and, and that's, and that's what kind of, kind of gave me, you know, like more higher consciousness, more spirituality, more like this stuff really works. You know what I mean? You know, our guidance system is inside us, you know, abundance is inside us, you know, all the answers that we seek are inside us. Just we, we're, we're, we're rusty. You know what I mean? We're rusty at intuition. We're, we're rusty at listening to our own self. <laughs> you know what I mean? We ignore it and and you know i started doing I, I started doing a lot of that throughout the day as well um on top of my intentions on you know on top of all the exercises and i'm telling you straight up i'm being 100 percent honest that 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 was my routine this is everything i was doing daily okay i scattered it throughout the day i'm not lying i'm not making it up i and i i, I and i think that's why i got so great results with it because because uh i was really doing it you know, I was really doing the exercises. I w was really doing it as best as I could. How Neville Goddard was explaining it. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, because once we start using our imagination, once we start doing it, we feel awkward. We haven't done it for a long time. You know what I mean. Sometimes, sometimes I just lay there and feel like I can't reimagine anything. <laughs> you know what I mean. So you know, you get better at it as you go on, and you keep on doing it and don't give up. But I think the reason why I didn't give up is because. I wasn't living with anybody, you know what I mean? I was by myself and that was a perfect opportunity for me to kind of test this stuff out and really stay on it and really do this stuff. And I was doing this stuff for three, four or five months, like in a row, you know, that's, this is what I was doing every day and I got pretty good with it. And, and, um, and it kind of really made me a believer, even though I said in the beginning of the video that, that I, mean, I always believed in, you know, law of attraction, I always believed in, you know, positive attracts positive, negative, negative, you know, just with personal, overall personal development. You know, I always believed that way, you know, growing up as a, as a young kid, but, but to say, I really believe it or to say that, you know, have I ever attracted something? You know I mean? This is the kind of probably the only time in my life that I could really say, Hey, I set this, I set this intention and it came true. Okay. And I set this me enormous intention and that one came true <laughs> you know what i mean then i would start then i would start you know asking you you the universe specific questions of different directions to go and then the answers would just come to me as i started stop asking people for advice i started trying to really fine tune my intuition and i did this by meditating doing these short little meditations throughout the day this stuff works my friends but you, you, you have to do the exercises, okay? And sometimes you have to be oval, like over protected with them, okay? Especially if you live with somebody else, you stay with somebody else, 
Okay, you have to be protective of your schedule. Okay, you have to be protected of your bedtime routine. You know, and this is where, you know, it just kind of really depends. If you have a significant other that loves to sit there and watch TV, you know, while you're trying to sleep, you know, that's that's going inside your subconscious mind. That's going to basically mess things up. You know, or they're on their iPhone, they're listening to music and you can hear it. You you know what I mean? Like it's it's being able to to really do what Never Galder says and get. And I think the most powerful one. I think if out of all of them, if you have that question, what what's the, the one thing? What's the most powerful? Do you think in your experience? Probably the most powerful is being able to when you go to bed at night, when you go to that drowsy state. You know, you're gonna go to sleep. You go inside your imagination. You go inside your intention. You live in the end. Okay, you imagine your wish is fulfilled. You imagine what you want is already here. Okay. You go inside your imagination and you go to sleep in that state. Okay. I know that sounds simple, but it's powerful. Even if you do one of them, that's probably the one thing I would do. If you lasted 47 minutes inside this video <laughs> to get that one little tip. Okay. But, um, but, uh, but I'm going to wrap this up, baby. I mean, I can ramble on. I'm just rambling now. Uh, I didn't think I was on this video is going to last this long. Maybe I'll cut it down a little bit. Uh, chop it down, edit it down. Um, but hopefully that helped. I and mean, those are some of the weird experiences, but it really made me a believer. Bottom line, Thailand made me, a, Thailand stuff made me, a, made me a believer in law of assumption. And uh, other than that, hopefully this helped and I'll see you in the next real law of attraction secrets.